Good morning. It's Communion Sunday again. So at this time I would like to invite you to pause this video, go find yourself some juice and a piece of bread so that we can join together in communion at the end of this video. What we want to talk about this morning is the uh, benefits that Christ has accorded us because of the cross. The cup and the bread, they speak of the cross. And so through the cross, Jesus has given us his very great and precious promises. So through them, we may be participants of his divine nature. And having been made participants of his divine nature, we may enjoy his eternal life forever. In that framework, Jesus gives us some helps. And he gives us God the Holy Spirit to come and live within us. And it's that person of the Holy Spirit that we want to talk about the next three Sundays, today, next week, and the following Sunday, or actually, which is, happens to be Pentecost Sunday. What is interesting to me is, is that this portion of Scripture that we're looking at this morning really finds its roots in Ezekiel. And I want to read this portion of Scripture from Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 through 27, real quick for you. It says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and to be careful to keep my laws. The reason I read that is because Jesus in the Gospel of John chapter 14 verse 15. And this is our text for today. It's chapter 15 verse 15 through, oh, pardon me, chapter 14 verse 15 through 22. He says, if you love me. You will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. So within that word to us this morning. Jesus says something very important. He says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Let me ask you a question. Are you perfect? Because I'm not. I can think of all kinds of things that cause me to be imperfect. I think of all the things that I've done and things that I'm ashamed of and things that I wish I hadn't done. But you know what? I like that verse in Ezekiel because there God gives me a promise. He says, I will cleanse you. I will cleanse you and I will remove from you all of sin's ways and strengths and so that you will be a new creation. And it's that new creation that Christ wants us to enjoy. And the benefit of that is, is that, as he says here, if you love me, you will obey what I command. So let me ask you, what did he command? We have to go back, because Jesus is speaking to his disciples on the Passover evening. And part of his discourse to them on that Passover evening was a verse of scripture 
where he says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another even as I have loved you. And that if you love one another even as I have loved you, by this will all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And so we see Jesus' commandment to us is love. It doesn't take away from the Ten Commandments but rather it brings the Ten Commandments together in focus. Because a lot of times when we look at the Ten Commandments, we think of them as do's and don'ts. And that can be probably true in many ways that there are some don'ts and there are definitely some do's. There's always do's with don'ts. The thing we need to understand is, is that Jesus accentuates the positive. The thing that propels us to keep his commandments is love. And then he tells us that I will pray and ask the Father to give you one who would come alongside you to be in you, who is God the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, there's an interesting verse It says that, that when the Holy Spirit has come, he will shed abroad God's love in us and he will not cause us to be ashamed but he will come with hope. I don't know about you, but we live in a world where we need a whole lot of hope. We need to not to be living a life of shame, but rather a life where we uh, understand the triumph of the cross. And so Jesus is saying to us, listen, you can't keep these commandments on your own. You need my intervention. You need my strength. You need my life living in you, that resurrection life. And that's what I like about Ezekiel because Ezekiel's promise that was made to Israel those many years ago was fulfilled in Christ. He says, I will take the heart of stone. And it's interesting, the laws were written on stone. And so that law that's on the stone has no bending, no Give to it. If you fail in any one part of it, you fail the whole of it. Let's think about it a moment. How many times in the Old Testament, when we read about the law and about the commandments, that if you fail in any one part, there's almost nothing to do but the awakening of judgment of some kind. In fact, it will make us feel to the point of where we're just not worthy, where we're just not worthy. The promise to us in that portion of scripture is rather unique because God says to us, not only will I take out the heart of stone, but I will put in a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit in you. That's exactly what he says here. That's exactly what Jesus says here in the gospel of John. I will ask the father, and he will send another, God the Holy Spirit, and he will come and dwell within you. What a promise. That's all because of the cross, which we're going to celebrate here in a few minutes. And within that thought, he says something else to us. And I will cause you to follow my laws. And it's rather interesting, it's the desire, the I want to. It's the I want to do what's right. Have you ever noticed that whenever you do something wrong, you feel bad about it? Well, I do sometimes, and many times, in fact. In, with, and when I do, I need to do something about it. Well, I ask, first of all, God for forgiveness. And then if I need to ask somebody else for forgiveness, I go and ask them for forgiveness. And then I feel whole again on the inside and that is because I want to do what God wants me to do it's not that I have to I don't have to do it but I want to do it and the I want to is spawned by God the Holy Spirit living in me my love for him propels me it's the thing that causes me to do what God wants me to do I don't have to do it, but I want to do it. 
And so we see God giving us His Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to walk with us, to be in us, to give us that, that sense of what is right and what is wrong. Notice what he's called. He's called the Spirit of Truth. And he will lead us to the whole truth. The truth of who Christ is for us. And so this morning, as we've gathered together, we want to celebrate what Christ has done for us on the cross of Calvary. This is just one small reflective thought for us of what he's done for us. There are so many things that he's done for us that time really doesn't allow me to, to go into any great detail. Wait till we get back together for, for church again. Then I can preach for that hour and a half and we can really talk about it. But we can't do that right now and I want to be, be respective of your time as you're sitting there watching. <sighs> yeah, me. So let's go to communion. If you have your cup and have your bread, it's time to turn our attention to what Christ did on the cross for us. What we're talking about with God the Holy Spirit and His coming, and we're going to talk about it next week and the week after, it has to do with His indwelling presence that helps us to love Him and to keep His commandments. So let's read His scripture to us this morning and I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and it's found in verse 23 for I received from the Lord that which had passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me and so at this time if you have bread there just take some and break it and if you're sitting with somebody else, share that. Share the bread with each other, as I will with Chris. She's standing here beside me holding the clicker to shut me off. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you for your body, which is given for us. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. That you carried my sin upon yourself. You became the sacrificial lamb so that I could stand before the Father, redeemed justified and standing in your righteousness Jesus thank you for that let's partake of the bread together and in the same way after the supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me and so we have the cup the fruit the juice of fruit and it's basically telling us that Jesus shed his blood once for all. He became everything, everything that we could not be to God. That we may stand before God clean as though we had no sin at all. Completely justified just as if we had never sinned. Think of it a moment. God sees you as justified today. So let's partake together with thanksgiving. Before we do, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the cup. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, which cleanses us from all sin. And just as we read in Ezekiel, it'll cleanse us from our idols. It'll cleanse us from our old life. And we thank you, Father God, that you have made a new life within us. And thank you, God, that you did not leave us as orphans, but you sent God the Holy Spirit to help us realize that we are children, children of the Almighty. Let's partake together of the cup. And I'm passing it on to Chris again. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to thank you this morning that we can come into your presence and be encouraged by your word. That God, we can truly keep your commands because we love you. And because you have put your love in us. And you have given us everything we need for the reset in life 
you have caused us to become a new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, Lord, I just pray your blessing on your people in Jesus' name. Amen.